Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna bring the fucking army. I don't give a fuck. How does this make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you feel? Oh, is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? You want, I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Monkey, hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're going to get yours and you're going to get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're going to bring the fucking threat? army. I don't give a fuck. How does this make you feel? Huh? You're filming my... Okay, look at this guy. has no idea what she's saying. He completely does not get the point. It goes right over his head. This is Cynthia Ortiz. It is the 5th of February, 2024. These are the Charles Perry, David Robertson, Stalker, Human Trafficking Podcast. If you're not doing it, prove that in a court of law. You're going to have two chances, I guess. One in, don't you have a civil something? You got to prove I'm lying and that I know I'm lying. And then you have a criminal case coming up. I, I don't know when he's going to arrest you. So, uh, you know, we're not getting the intel for nothing, David. We're not getting it just because we're all bored and shit. They're getting it to put you in jail. You guys started getting caught when you did the crime to me. So, there's that. So, we, Mr. I mean, we have the same conversations, Mr. Perry. I'm going to get you fired. You're going to be walking. I'm taking your car. We're going to make you go be trafficked. The guy has such bad crime, and it gets caught when he does it to me in, in specifically. And, 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 and he's at this point trying to fucking kidnap a woman to cover up his crime so he can run for governor. And he calls people in Oklahoma. He's been in Oklahoma. And they can't get him to leave. So I guess he had Judy Parker, a judge out of Lubbock, um, trying to do something. Right, Mr. Perry? How do I know she's involved? How do I know Judge Judy Parker from Lubbock, Texas is involved in your trafficking? To what extent is she? To how, how knowingly involved is she? I mean, you guys can tell us. We don't want to lie or anything. So you tell us. You put it on the docket. You put it on the record. Okay? So uh, that way there's no, you know, we're not lying. We're just asking some questions, some reasonable, logical, prudent, individual questions that anybody would want to know. We know she's involved. You tell us. To what extent and how knowingly is she involved? So, I guess uh, there has been many discussions about overreach, judicial overreach, because all parties are in Oklahoma. All the injuries in Oklahoma. Mr. Perry has come to a state where nobody invited him. I left Lubbock in 2013, November. I moved to the Dallas area. He came up there and stalked me cause a whole lot of problems like he is now tried to get me fired then like he did like he's trying now so what's my job have to do with him it's not his business what I do is it it is none of his business it is not absolutely none of his business where I live who I date who I hang out with my who my family is what I do for a living nothing in my life is any of Charles business Charles Perry's business or David Robertson's business, or Lucius, or Calvin, or any of those minions you hired, those thugs. None of their business at all. Those people, a lot of those people I just named, I've never in my life even met them. I don't know them. I don't want to know them. I've not done a fucking thing to them. And they're trying to destroy me for you. All those men trying to destroy one woman. All those men can't pick on tough guys. All those men are so weak and so pathetic, they got to try to destroy one woman. And they get caught like never before in their lives. The criminal activity you guys engorge yourselves in has never been this caught and this exposed in your life. And that happened when you started doing that crime to me. Wow. And you do the same thing every day that gets you the same results. So how are you going to be governor? I don't like you. I rejected you and I left. You aren't good enough for me. You do not fit into my crowd at all. You don't even get close. I do not date men who have a peep and tom problem. 
I do know I don't date men who violate women in a violent, vulgar way. I do not I do not date men who don't honor and respect my reputation. I do not date men who are canned food losers. I'm entitled. I what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. Yeah, not my thing. You take that shit and shove it up your ass. So who was the uh, you know the, the everybody's? He, he, so I le I come to didn't come to Oklahoma where my family is. I come home to Oklahoma to be with my family. Mr. Perry was absolutely never invited here. I came. I moved two times to get away from him and to never again have to hear what he thinks and how he feels and what he wants. And I need this and I want that and I'm gonna pose impose all that on you. And bother you with that. Wow, all I left, all she had to do is fuck off and go do your thing. And you came everywhere I go and you bother and harass and threaten and bother and harass and threaten and bother and harass and threaten all day long and cause one major loss after another. You've not lost your home, you've not lost your car, you've not missed a meal, you've not lost a damn thing. You have taken home more than one home, more than one car, everything I own, gotten me fired from more than one place, and we all know it. You are going to have to prove in a criminal case you didn't do it. Because there's a lot of evidence that you did. They'll present it beyond reasonable doubt. Here's what we got. Here's how we prove they did this. She didn't do it. They did it to her. They did it on purpose, and their intent was malicious. They did it intending to cause harm and to cause the injury they caused. Beyond reasonable doubt, here's the case. And you have to prove you didn't do it and you can't. Uh, we'd love to see you try. We can't wait. You just threatened to get me fired again. You've been threatening that for some time. Perry and Robertson both threaten on a daily basis to take my car. They've already done it more than once. Wreck my car. Ruin the engine, slash my tires. Every day is something. And he wants to run for governor of Texas. Calls up here constantly, demanding people in Oklahoma get him elected to the governor's office. Instead of going to Texas, running for office in Texas, minding his own business, get your ass off your, you know, your perverted at, uh, ass up off your chair and go work and stop bothering people in Oklahoma. And causing major problems for people in Oklahoma and then demanding everybody lie for you and demanding everybody cover up for you and demanding everybody make sure you get in that governor's seat why don't you go try to work for the governor's seat and leave people in the state where you don't live and are wanted and were never invited leave us alone the rest of us can do it why can't you I mean we're, we're all confused we get up every day and don't bother anybody at all do our thing. We go to work. We go to school. We go to, you know, go go do our thing. Hang out with friends, family, whatever. I was hanging out with my family just fine until you fucked that up. You fucked it up and you did it on purpose. Your guy Lucius or whoever, he said we've spent millions of dollars and years of our time trying to groom her family to help us get Cindy trafficked. We sold her to this Larry guy who's a Houston realtor. We sold her in an illegal human trafficking deal. Now we're, trying, we're desperate to deliver so we can get our money, right? Do you sell people or not? Are you involved in human trafficking, Charles Perry? Yes or no? Yeah. It comes with a life sentence per count. That is the same sentence as murder in some states. You're in a lot of trouble because most victims don't know they were sold to who they were sold, where the guy lives, and what he does for a living before delivery. They don't know. I do. Because it's different when you do the crime to me and you're still, you still don't act like you don't know what that means, that we have all that. So how are you going to run this? When you're going to be governor, you got to be able to identify a problem very quickly. you got to be able to identify the cause of the problem very quickly. No one has time to sit down and explain it 20 different ways so slow Charles gets it. Okay? Nobody has that kind of time especially in an emergency situation. Nobody has time to repeat things for you over and over and over, and it just doesn't click. So if you want to be governor, act like you can. Act like you're competent. Act like you're able. 
But er, uh, I mean, a lot, uh, here, here, the, here in nine years, he's been in Oklahoma, where my family is. Introduced himself to my family, and caused a separation, because the test is: if you didn't exist, would there be a problem at my work or with my family, or with my college, or with all the stuff you've caused a problem with, sir? There would not. Your guy said, we've never had one figure out we had cameras in their house. We've never fig had one figure out we were the cause of the problems. But a lot of times we get your plans before you do it. There's a police recording of you talking about it. Okay, McNamara email, Michael's drugged email, right? Entrapment email, Judge Kirkendall. We're quoting judges, Mr. Barry. And you've taken this really lightly. We're like, wow, I, I, the pullover conversations that take her car away from her, then she'll call us and we'll sit her down and explain that she just doesn't understand how this works. She does have to go. And we're like laughing at you. Uh, you're committing a very serious crime. Here's what's going to happen. You can explain that to your jury in your criminal trial. Explain. Just, I'm sure they just don't understand how human trafficking works. Maybe you can just explain it to them in your criminal trial. Okay? The rest of us don't want to hear it. We don't care. We just don't. We fucking don't want to hear it. You act like you're quoting us. You act like you have our names. You have our code words. And I'm sorry, but it's the other way around. You can't be Governor Charles if you're not able to get that. She's like, how's it? How do you feel with someone sticking a camera in your face? Do you want me to go get the pictures of you? I'm gonna get you all day long. Mr. Perry does the same thing to me. He just types it. He cloned my phone, which is worse than hacking. He could do anything from my phone I can do. I've got calls, fucking pages and pages of phone calls. I'm like, I, don't, I didn't call these people. I didn't make this many phone calls. Who's calling from my phone? Right? Charles, who's calling? Are you calling from my telephone? Illegal use and access of an electronic device that is not yours to use. And we've told you to get the hell out of it. And every time you do that, they're going to charge you, sir. Did you think they wouldn't? Why would they not? Why the fuck would they not? So, I mean, you're a sick little fuck. You just are. And that started coming out. You hear this all your life. It started coming to light. When you did it to me, I have help. I have, there's cops all over you guys all the time. You're going to get me fired. But I thought you weren't stalking. I thought you weren't trafficking women. I thought you weren't cloning my phone. So what do you know about where I work and when I work and who to talk to to get me fired? Huh? You just made a threat to interfere with commerce. And you always make these threats behind, in, you type it in my phone. Because you're too coward to do it to my face, like a man. You pick on women, you don't pick on men. You're that weak, you have, and somebody commented on that. The guy is so fucking weak. Tough guys pick on tough guys. This guy is so fucking weak, he picks on women. And he can't even do it by himself. He's got to get 30 of his buddies to help him. He's that pathetic. How embarrassing. How fucking embarrassing for him. And I bet he has no idea he should be embarrassed. Not a clue. If things don't click. Okay, so this guy's... And, and we've said the same thing. How does it feel to have your privacy invaded the way you invade mine? Our guys, though, have like a court order or you got a leak or something. They have an informant they're working with. You just have a weirdo problem because what you're doing is illegal. These guys don't do it if they don't have a court order or they don't have some somebody from the inside talking to them. Okay? That's just like it. That's just the way it is. I'm not told which one is. I don't, I'm not told how they get, for, get the information, what they get from an informant or an infiltrator or for, from a, a court order. I'm not told that. It's a need to know, and I don't need to know that. You ask me every day, and every day I have to repeat myself. I'm not told that, and I wouldn't help you if I was. And you keep asking, and I keep saying the same thing. I'm not told that, and I wouldn't help you if I was. We all want you gone. Get it. Get it through your head. Everybody wants you gone. They're sick of you. So I guess Perry has been in Oklahoma causing one major, major, major problem after another for me on purpose, maliciously. So uh, one of your attorneys or someone... Uh, said, I don't think Judge Parker has jurisdiction over shit because nobody's in Texas. She's in Oklahoma. Charles is in Oklahoma. The injuries are to her in Oklahoma. He doesn't have any injuries. 
if he's getting harassed in Oklahoma, then he needs to go home to his family in, in Texas where he lives, where he's not being harassed. It's as simple as that. And leave Cindy alone. Um, if, the, if he wants to try to make that lie work, that he's being harassed in a state where he doesn't live. And another guy said, if I'm being accused of stalking, the last thing I would do is go where the accuser lives, thousands of miles away from my home, and refuse to leave. That is stalking. He, he's introduced himself to her family. He's interjected himself into her life. He's gone all over the state of Oklahoma and said that's his wife. And yet everybody started realizing he's not all there. He's a nutcase. Because in nine years, they've never been seen in the same room. They definitely haven't been seen as a happy couple. So they're not a couple. He's a he's a whack job. The guy's a full-blown whack job. Because nobody's he's going around telling people that's his girlfriend. She's tried 11 times to get a judge to order, him a, prote order a protective order for her, an injective order. And he has to buy his way out. She moved two times to get away from him. So nobody's seen him in nine years. Nobody's seen him in the same room. Definitely not as a uh, walking around, you know, as a as a couple. So he's a he's a complete nutcase, and I I'm sick of hearing I'm sick of hearing it from him. He he's a, that guy's out there somewhere. He wants to be governor of Texas. He calls everybody demand that we lie for him and we cover this up so he can be governor of Texas. He wants her put in jail until she agrees to lie for him so he can be governor of Texas. He wants to starve her to death. And get her fired and take her fun her money and her car and leave her destitute and she can sit there and rot or she can lie for him. Talk about coercion, sir. Witness tampering. So they did, they pulled a little stunt this weekend. We know that Dave Robertson has has been there's a bunch of them that have been very desperate to get me delivered. And how do I know that? They have police on them. Okay? So they were all, oh, what are we going to do if we can't deliver? We just, we, we got to take her car. We're going to have to get her pulled over. She's got a lot of tickets that are supposed to show up. We've got to get her fired from her job, make it look like she's stealing money, and set her down and explain, well, you just don't understand how this works. You have to go. You have to be trafficked. You have to. You don't have a choice. We're all like, uh, you're breaking the law, so I think we do. I think I do. You're caught, too, by the way. We just heard everything you said. So I'm sorry, but I think I do have a choice. I think you're on planet nutbag is what you're on, delusion. So anyway, somebody said J Judy is, is, pr is uh, this is some major ju uh, uh, judicial overreach because Charles is in Oklahoma and he has been for nine years and he refuses to leave. So in his refusal to leave, he's expressed intent to stay. He's been here more than 90 days. He lives in Oklahoma, not Texas. The injury to Cindy, she lives in Oklahoma. She came here to get away from him. Nothing like a, I'm not stalking, but I've gone where the accuser is, thousands of way, miles away from my home, and I refuse to leave. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes you. So, because uh, we, we look at what people do, sir, not what they say. Charles, you're not, you know, you don't even make sense. And I don't, I don't care what you think. Didn't ask you. I, I just fucking don't care. No one does. Didn't ask you, did I, Connie? <coughs> anyway, so he 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 gets uh, so they they believe that there's no Texas jurisdiction or application of Texas laws when everybody's in Oklahoma, both parties are in Oklahoma, the injuries are in Oklahoma. So why is Judy doing anything at all? Charles, answer the question. Answer the damn question. So he doesn't even make sense. He's just like this guy. Always, I'm gonna get you fired. I'm gonna take your car. You're gonna walk. We're gonna make you go. You're going. We're gonna make you go. Oh my God, we're quoting you. Your meetings, right? We found out Mike Neely was drugged before anybody else said it. How, how do I know J Judy Parker's been involved in this? Huh? You went hunting with Sam Cummings, a federal judge, who denied everything I put before him with not one reason given. It's a little bit hard to do your legal research and really, you know, look at the facts and everything when you're out duck hunting with the defendants. How do I know that? You're getting caught when you do it to me, and you act like you don't know what that means. And you want to be governor? Here's the thing. If you want to be governor, you better understand fact and fiction. You better be able to differentiate 
real from your imagination. Offensive conduct versus not offensive conduct. Why is something illegal? Because it's offensive conduct. It's outside social norms. It's deviancy. And at your age, you ought to know that. At your age, you ought to know that. And if you don't know that, you can't be governor. You're not smart enough. It's not a Republican-Democrat thing. If you're a Republican or you're a Democrat, you have to show competency to serve in the office for which you seek to run. And you got to be in the state that you're going to run. you got to live in Texas, not Oklahoma. People in Oklahoma don't give a shit if you get elected or not. So quit calling everybody up and demanding they help you get elected and cover up what you did and lie for you. We call that witness tampering. Are they going to charge you for every time you make that kind of phone call? You don't know. We don't know what they're going to charge you with. But we know you went duck hunting with Sam Cummings. We know you involved Judy Parker. And that there was some judicial overreach. And a lot of it. Now why would that be? Because that's not the Judy I knew. Judy and I were friends, Charles. That's not the Judy I knew at all. Why do you bother me all day and think that's how you get elected to the governor's office in another state? See, you're not all there. You're just as stupid as him. How do you like being put on camera? Do you like it when somebody sticks a camera in your face? Do you like it when your privacy is invaded the way you invade mine? Let me go get the pictures of you. Oh my god. You totally missed my point. I'm gonna get you. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Bye-bye. That's what he did. You're the same. You think this guy could be governor of Texas? Because you're no different. You don't make any sense any more than he does. You're going to get me fired. Duly noted for the record. On February 5th, 2024, 11.07 p.m., Charles Perry threatened for the 5,800th fucking time in a week to get me fired, to take my car, to make me starve to death until I lie for him and help him win the governor and go be trafficked to Larry so he can get his money. Profiting. You know, he's going to make a personal profit. Duly noted for the record. We did say, we have said that we f discovered that long ago. Did we not? How many times have you had to extend delivery? Because th you were supposed to deliver last year. Were you not? August 2nd? Then at crisp. then in, what, I'm sorry, that was 2022, August 2022. Then December 2022. And then July or somewhere in the summer, 2023. Then Christmas 2023. And here you're trying again. Is that true or not? How many more? We can always tell because all of a sudden I start having major problems. All of a sudden, I start having a lot of money problems, a lot of income problems, a lot of problems at my job, problems with my school, problems I don't normally have. I've worked at the club where I am behind the bar since November, like middle of November. Not one time did I come up short. Here we are. You need a delivery. I get a traffic pullover again. Everybody's all pissed off because it was clean. He ran my license, and it was clean, and apparently there was supposed to be something on it. And they are tr so they, they've vowed, Charles types in my phone, we will do it again. We will try again. We will have you pulled over again to make sure you get a ticket. Will ya? Are you using tax dollars the way they're meant to be used, Mr. I want to be governor of Texas? Fiscal conservative, whatever. Aren't you a fiscal conservative Christian man? Be what you say you are or shut up and quit lying, fraud. I, at no time do I have to lie for you. And at do, no time do I have to be trafficked, sir. And the fact that I know you sold me into who and where the guy lives and what he does for a living ought to make you shit yourselves. I'm going to name your people Lucius. I've not met Lucius. To the best of my knowledge, I have no idea who the guy is. And yet he's trying to destroy me for you. Calvin, who's bald and fat is the one that set up all the looks, let's make it look like she's stealing money. He set that up and he calls in the pullovers. Bald fat guy, they tell me. Never met him in my life. Certainly don't wake up on any day and go, I think I'll just try to fuck with this random guy I don't even know. But he certainly just fucks with me constantly. Right? Sonjay is your hacker. Also never met the guy. 
Geppetto is your witch. Also, never met the guy. Blankenship, Desiree, Beverly, Renee. Haven't met any of those people in my life that I know of. Andrew, Lawrence, James, Reuben. Haven't I? I may have met James and Reuben. If they're the people I'm thinking of, they're Sepulpa the police officers. Briefly met them both. Barely know them. Certainly don't have any kind. Don't have time for just. Let me just pick on two random Sepulpa cops because I'm bored. So why are they picking on me? For you? Huh? I barely know them. You know who else I barely know? That I have lost my butt trying to get justice for this guy because I'm about justice. It doesn't matter who it is. Mike Neely. Barely know him. I met and interacted with Mike Neely equal to what I've met and interacted with Reuben and James if they're the two people I'm thinking of. I could be wrong. That might not even be the ones you're talking about. Nesbitt, don't know the guy, never met him, that I know of. Uh, Damien and Bre Bethany are new. Gabe and Jacob are new. I believe I've probably met Jacob brief twice. I think he's come in the club. Twice. He's also, I guess, helping Calvin set up this. Let's make it look like she's stealing money all of a sudden. Never has before, but today we're going to make it look like she has. So we can carry out Charles's threat to get her fired and then traffic her and make her lie for him so he can win the governor's office. Wow. So if that's the guy I'm thinking of, I have met him twice. Gabe, I don't know from fucking Adam. I never met him that I know of. Richard and Dickie, I believe I've met them both once. Um, so, I, I mean, again, barely know him. Barely fucking know him. So who are all these people you hired to, to just go at me and go at me and go at me and try to ruin a woman? Charles. Um, if you have to have things said t to you more than one time, there's no time for that in the governor of governor's office. Remember, I, I was raised in the home of an elected official. I worked in government reform federal <coughs> all my life. There's no fucking time for that shit in there. In that world, there's no time. You don't have any time to say it more than once. The guy better get it. And then you move on to the next thing. There's too much to go over. There's too much to review. There's too many pressing matters all the time. No one has time to sit down and explain it to a man who's mentally slow. And nobody has time to repeat themselves. So if you are not intellectually competent enough to see... When you do the crime to me, you get caught. So if you don't like getting caught, don't do the crime to me. If you're that stupid, do you really think you could make it in the governor's office, sir? Really? It's very hard to do when you're harassing and threatening a woman in Oklahoma to, to go campaign in Texas. Charles, go campaign in Texas and fuck off me. I don't want anything to do with you. I moved two times to get away from you. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care who you think you are. I just assume kick your balls up into your brain as look at you. And you need to understand I mean that. You repulse me. You make my skin crawl. All my skin crawls. Every time you start trying to talk to me. It makes me want to throw up. I hate it. It is awful what you've done to me. And for that reason, we get the help and you get told on. Because you're far outside social norms, what you're doing. Far outside social norms. Your conduct is extremely offensive, which is why it is a crime. It's not offensive because it's a crime. It's a crime because it's offensive. Now, explain that to judge whoever you're in front of on any given day. And let's see if you even know what the hell that means. Because I think you don't. I, th I don't think you could explain what I just said. I don't think you'd explain it to anybody. I think you have no fucking idea what I just said. And you can't be governor if you're not intellectual, intellectually competent, socially competent, mentally, emotionally, physically competent. You can't do it. And you're not there. You're not even close. So somebody got mad at you for being very cruel to me. And the guy said, I'm... Charles Perry has Huntington's disease that causes paranoia, delusion, psychosis, and paracognitive cognitive reasoning, hallucinations, and he doesn't want Cindy to know, 
and I'm sick and tired of watching him torment her all the time and cause one major problem for her all, and trying to ruin her. He's trying to ruin her. And I'm tired of that. I don't understand it. And so make sure she, she finds out, here's what's wrong with you. He's actually got a doctor's diagnosis of cuckoo. He's nuttier than a fruitcake. And he's not all there. And you can tell when you're talking to him. You can't talk to him for more than a minute. And you can tell something's wrong with him. He's not all there. So, I, you know, I think she needs to understand what, here's the, sh here's what she's dealing with. He's, he should be in a nursing home. He really should be in a nursing home. He's that far gone. And I'm pissed at him because he's putting her through hell. I'm pissed at him. I don't understand this. He go runs around and tells everybody that's his girlfriend. And there's no way. There's no fucking way. I don't understand what he's doing. I don't. I'm not his girlfriend. He's trafficked me. The, the girlfriend, that's a bunch of load of crap to get everybody to cooperate with him. They think they're doing a good thing, and they're not. You're helping him facilitate the trafficking and delivery of a human being, and it's illegal to do that. But he wants you to think you're helping him get a date. Well, if you want a date with someone, you don't ruin their life, do you? You don't get them fired from their job, do you? Would you go out with someone that did that to you? Separated you from your family? Stole everything you have? Tried to frame you on a murder? Tried to frame you and make it look like you're stealing money? Would you date someone like that that did that to you? Stole your car? Wrecked your car? Vandalizes your car? Killed a cop? Do you, in my opinion, listen, I'm not using the word allegedly anymore. Based on what I know and what I've seen, Mr. Perry is a pedophile and a cop killer. That's my opinion. I'm not going to use the word fucking allegedly even once. You, that's your deal. You prove you're not doing it. What about the Houston compound, Charles? What about our witness? That place smells like the sewer. Because those kids, he raped, he ba they raped, they kidnapped some girls. And then they raped them and got them pregnant. And then they had kids. Now they're, they're pimping the girls out, they're pimping the kids out, and they're raping them all. So that place smells like the sewer because those little kids are shitting on the floor from getting sodomized. One kid was screaming bloody murder while he was getting raped. And his mom was in the next room crying. She couldn't help it, her kid while he's getting violently attacked. By some pervert. John Cooey type. Yeah. So. You know what they told her? He'll get used to it. We'll get him a toy. Quit crying. Now how does a child get used to being violently attacked that way? John Cooey did the same thing. What's the difference? What's the difference? There's no difference. In my opinion. That's what you are. Because that's the information we have, sir. You started getting caught when you did the crime to me. Because before you did the crime to me, no one knew about all this. You guys hid this all your lives until you did it to me. If you don't like get caught, get the fuck out of my life and never bother me again. It is that simple. Because I have a team with me that you're pissing off. Every time you invade my privacy, every time you try to talk to me, every time you tr cause a problem for me, and you every day y'all run around going, how'd she find out? How'd she know about that? Oh my God, we're we're done repeating. We're fucking done. You can't be governor if you have people have to say the same thing over and over. You're just as stupid as this man. My father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? Pictures? You want? I'll I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of it. Monkey, hit the road, dude. I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get. I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you bring the fucking threat? army. You're gonna I don't give a. Out. This make you feel? Huh? Leave me, please. Hey, I can't hey. live here anymore because you stopped me. That's no, why I no, moved. No, just talk leave me. me alone. I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, zero minutes. I don't what, want to what, ever talk to you again. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you. But what please happened? leave me alone. Steps? Please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the all day long. Types in my phone. I'm gonna get you. We take. We're gonna get. We're gonna get your car. You're gonna be walking. Call me. I'm gonna make you broke. I made you broke. Call me. I'm gonna get you fired. I'm gonna have you arrested. I'm gonna have you pulled over and ticketed. Call me. Type that in my phone. Who's leaking? Is it Al? Is it Jim? 
Is it Al? Oh, who the fuck is Al? Jim who? I know about 20 gyms. Which one? Do you think I really think I would help you? Do you really think that? You're that mentally slow? You think I would help you? Is it your family? Is it your kids? Okay, I'm not told who leaks are and wouldn't help you if I, if I, if I was. We all want you gone. We're just sick of you. Everybody's sick of y'all. All of you. All day long. Harass, harass, harass. We need to talk. No, we don't. You need to talk, but we do not need to talk. You never shut up. So I get it. You've made your point. You get, we get it. This whole thing where you guys, oh, we got to sit her down and tell her she can't stay in Oklahoma. And she just doesn't understand how this works. Listen, we're done with that. Okay? We're done with it. I, we understand perfectly how this works. How this works is you're committing a crime against me and you're caught. Act like you understand what that means. Explain how your tr human trafficking criminal activity works to your jury. Because we're getting the information that, like you said that in a meeting, to put in, 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 in a courtroom so you go to jail and you're not hurting people anymore. Period. That's it. I've, we're, expre here's, we're getting the intel. We own it. We've expressed. It. Here's our intention as to what we're going to do with it. In the meantime, the hope is that it would deter your crime because you're caught. Anybody with half a brain would stop at this point. Any, it should deter your crime because you're caught. Right? No, I'm, and most people are, yeah, you would think. Well, one would think. Not the, not the sponge. Mensa, we call them Mensa Queens. 30 guys sit around trying to figure out how to make Cynthia Ortiz fail. They, they're too weak to pick on, you know, tough guys pick on tough guys. Or you're not tough. You make yourselves weak. Lucius, aren't you the one that runs around? She's making us look weak. Nope. You're making you look weak. You make you look weak. <coughs> because what's going on is you're not identifying the cause of your problems or a quick solution or the solution that would be effective. You're not quickly identifying the cause of your problems. You're doing the crime to me, you get caught. That started with McNamara email that was in 2015. Here we are nine years later and you're still scratching your heads trying to figure out cause and effect same different before and after really and Charles wants to be governor. Wow, I don't think I don't think that's gonna work out. Stop, stop. I don't stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, no. just talk leave to me. me alone. I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave me alone. minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you again. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. Just, please just, leave me alone. Huh? Leave, stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. This makes leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, my God. See, this is how people end up on Lifetime. This is how people get hurt and stabbed. And then you want to say that the woman is crazy because she was the one walking down the street in whatever clothes that she was wearing. If a woman tells you to leave her alone. I moved twice to get away from Charles Berry. I, I completely moved to a whole other state, uprooted my whole life, started all over again, not one time, but two. And all he had to do was leave me the fuck alone. And they're constantly walking away from you. That is your cue to back the hell up, turn around, and, and talk it up. She does not want to deal with you. And no, she does not have to give you an explanation. And no, she does not even have to give you five seconds of anybody's damn time because you cannot control your primal feelings from your testosterone running through your veins to you see something pretty that you think you're supposed to have. Leave her alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. It doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their
terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk. Mr. Perry, my answer is no and fuck you. We do not need to talk. Save it for your jury. We do not need to talk. Save it for your jury. I will not talk to you. You are typing in my phone all the time. I hear recordings of y'all talking. I don't need to have a conversation with you. I don't. You need to stop imposing on everybody else. Imposing your criminal activity on everybody else. It can your slime all over the place. We get the help because of it. You get told on because of it. The same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex. It's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. See, when I, when I move twice, when I go through all the trouble to move twice to get away from somebody I've rejected, my answer is no. And you need to have some dignity and class and self-respect and learn how to say next and move on. My answer is no and to fuck you. And anything that you try to do to me to coerce or force or pressure or kidnap or rape is simply more added charges they'll put on, add to the list. You do what you do, okay? We just scoop up your criminal excrement. That's all there is to it. My guys don't need your help, Charles. They never have. And when they, when they get stuff and they tell me about it, it's never up to you, is it? But the more you contact me, the more we get. Because you're pissing off people who have a lot of power and are deeply offended by your conduct. Say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. Doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. Are you asking law enforcement locals, to Oklahoma law enforcement, to raid the club for you, Charles? Yeah, they're not your bitches, are they? Are they your bitches? Did you have, answer the question, yes or no, did you ask them to raid the club, and why? What's your interest in my workplace, and why do you always make it hostile if you're not doing what we say, which is stalking, and that is a crime? Okay? Okay. What difference does it make to you that you would call in a raid? Are you doing that, yes or no? Oh, that's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. I don't want proof of this. Are you using Oklahoma taxpayer dollars and resources for your personal financial gain, yes or no? You answer the question. Call Judge Parker and tell her the answer to that question, yes or no, and Judge Egan, both of them, tell them. What in the world is the answer to the question, yes or did you call in a raid, did you call in a pullover, yes or no? Did you have Calvin do it? Yes or no? Are you trying to force and pressure me to do something I don't want to do, I won't do it? Yes or no? Please leave me alone. Hey men, leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them, especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiasm. Go get her car, then she'll be forced to do what we say. How many recordings do the police have of you saying that? How many are there? You want to prove it out like you did the, f the pullover the other night? When that guy pulled me over, I'm going to tell you something. The first thing out of my mouth was, it looks like you were waiting for me. And he never said, 
Why would I be waiting for you? Who the hell are you? That's not what he said at all. He said, actually, I just got here. And I'm thinking, this place emptied out an hour ago. I'm an employee that works here, and I'm the only one here to patrol. Everyone else is long gone. So you just got here when I'm leaving? And how would you know when I'm leaving that you would position yourself right there to pull me over? See, I can sting up even a cop, and you guys know that. I mean, if you're corrupt, that's what I'm looking for. If you're acting corruptly, I'm going to figure that out like that. I'm very, very good at what I do. There's a reason they have me on this team, not you. You're not working on this team. I am. We get th we've heard all the Josh Burstyn's really jealous of her. Blankenship's really jealous of her. They're all trying to ruin her because they're jealous of her. Don't be jealous. Keep up. Just get better at it. Uh, look what I've had to go through to get at get as good at it as I am. But they called me in for a fucking reason. Excellence is the bar. I don't have a choice. That's life and death for me. Literally, it's life and death for me, and you know that. If I fuck up, it could get me killed. And you know that. So, that's what he said to me. And, uh... It was, you know, whatever. Let everybody was. There was a bunch of phone calls right after that, Mr. Perry. What do you mean her driver's license came up clean? Who cleaned it? What'd you have on there? A bunch of tickets. That's what somebody goes. He had a bunch of tickets on there. That wasn't. She wasn't supposed to be clean. Was it clean? It was clean. Shit. Who did that? Who has that kind of power? I don't know. So. This is what everybody else see, thinks of you, though. You are a disgust. You're garbage. And so because of that, your conduct is offensive to other people. We get the help. You get told on. Most time, If you notice that interaction with that officer was completely different than the last seven that have pulled me over in the past year, I almost get pulled over once a month. Nobody gets pulled over that much. In my whole life, I've never been pulled over that much. All of a sudden, here comes Charles Perry who thinks he's entitled to his crime, entitled to his lie and his facade. And there's a whole lot of people that disagree, vehemently disagree. So we get the help you get told on. McNamara email was the first, but not the first you know of. Sir, that was in 2015. And that email said, Mr. Perry is threatening me with a false arrest and coercion and enticement. Yeah, nothing's changed. That's okay. I don't leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. Please yeah, leave me alone. Hey, men. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way, okay? It's not clever, it's not cool, it's not cute. It's garbage, it's absolute garbage behavior and you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public, it doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon. All right, so this is my, this is our blog, justiceforsin.wordpress.com. This is uh, my shrinks page. So she called uh, Perry, threatened a false arrest, then he carried it out, and uh, then dismissed the charges, and uh, showed his delusion when he went into her courtroom and stated under oath, I'm the victim of a political vendetta, and she filed a police report in retaliation of my job as a senator. I didn't live in Texas. He's a little podunk nothing. I've been in politics all my life. He was the new guy. When, when I lived there, he was the new guy. I helped him get elected. There's a lot of emails about the campaign going back and forth. Those are on, my, on the Facebook page. So they have uh, not one issue, no tweets, no emails, no texts, no rants about any political issue at all because he's delusional. Did he imagine it or did he just lie? 
we don't he, tell us, Mr. Perry, when you claim there was a political vendetta that led to a false police report, did, by the way, what the police report was about is I was trying to get a protective order, and in the state of Oklahoma, you have to, by law, file a police report, and they knew that. My first police report and protective order attempt was in May 2015, and I forgot the police report, so the judge denied me. One was jurisdiction. I had an attorney. She didn't clearly make the case for jurisdiction. The second was you didn't bring the police report. Marler versus Clover requires it. That's the, that's the case law. So the judge said, no protective order for you. I said, I got that. I have the case. I did file it. I have a case number and the officer's name that took the report. His name was James Lowry. That's James Rubin. Of the, that's those two. And he goes, uh, he goes, uh, n n no, you have to have the actual report. And I was like, crap. Okay, so I got denied. So they knew that, and Mark Warman is an attorney in Oklahoma, seasoned old fart guy. So he knew you have to have a police report to get a protective order. I filed the police report. In a week, I'm arrested and taken to Lubbock, where I don't live. No, you know, they knew I had to, I'm acting in compliance with the law in the state where I live, and I get charged from some judge in another state where I don't live. Talk about judicial overreach. There was no investigation. They obstructed justice. They destroyed my evidence. And now it's a problem. Right? We still don't know what the vendetta was he made up or lied about or imagined or the proof of it. You have to have probable cause, Judge Hansen, to sign off on an arrest warrant, especially for someone in a state that doesn't, you know, that doesn't lives in a whole other state where the laws might be different. Mr. Perry clearly concealed the fact that you have to file a police report and that it hadn't been investigated yet to determine whether it was true or false. There was no proper collection of my evidence. And whoever at TPD gave you that report fucked up big time. Fucked up big time. That's not what you do. We'll show you what that is in a minute. So, I, they, they told me you gotta see a shrink. I'm like, fine, whatever. Okay, so she says, well, it's a stalking escalation. See, right here. So someone commented on that. Everything he tries to do now is just another stalking escalation, just like her doctor said. She's a shrewish, you know, right here. Unfortunately, his escalations, and this is, this is, well, I tell you, I work with some people who are di with developmental disabilities that act the same way. They're big, and they're big, and they're tall, and they... They know how to escalate, you know, and hey, or something, you know, ignore. But the problem they th is they can escalate more than you can ignore, and that's what you're dealing with with Charles Perry. He will do things to devastate your life, so you can't ignore it. It'll take, he'll do things that will cost you a hell of a lot of money and a whole lot of time to fix the problem he made. Or repair the, de the damage, right? So someone commented on that, Charles. It's just one more stalking escalation. Why is he calling your coworkers to try to get you fired? Yeah, it's none his business where you work. So what's he doing? Uh, this is our disclaimer. Apply the but for. So the question was asked. I maybe this morning. I think um, it's been a long day, and uh, the last two days, Mr. Perry's really ramped up the harassment. So um, we've I've typed a shit ton of the emails of what they're trying to do to me next, what they're talking about doing to me next. The police get it in a wire, on the wire, or whatever, or from a leak or whatever, and I'm, they're playing it for me, and I'm typing it up. So for the last two days, it's been insane busy because they're getting desperate to make a delivery. Yeah. Is that true or not? We don't want to lie, you know, or anything. Yeah. Okay, so he said the test is, would she have a conflict or f with her family right now and be separated from her family right now if Charles Perry didn't exist? Probably not. Would she have a conflict at her work right now if there wouldn't be, if Charles Perry didn't exist? Probably not. Would she have problems with somebody always trying to take her car and, and make her destitute if Charles Perry didn't exist? Probably not. She probably would have never met Dave Robertson. Dave Robertson's been doing this in a club for a long time. So we've identified, let's see, Joe and, and David and Lucius and those guys are human trafficking. It's just what they do. They're selling people and exploiting for sex. 
they're prostituting girls out. They're running some of their girls through the club where I work now. They were laundering money in there. You know, you get you go up back and you get a fuck ton of ones and you throw it on stage and the girl scoops it up and gives it to Dave and goes and does you know services the the client the John. They do their prostitution thing and then he, he lets her have a place to live and once in a while she, she might get to eat. But she doesn't make too much trouble, right? I know I can tell you exactly what girls in there are doing that. We heard that you want to take over the club without the owner knowing you're taking over the club by having get rid of all the girls that work there that are not traffic victims and just have your girls in there. Is that true? And in that way you can control the club. He's got his guy in there. Somebody said the worst mistake he made is telling Cindy that he still talks to Joe, that he still talks to Joe all the time, that they're best friends. He should have never said that. You can't make mistakes like that with Cindy. You can't do it. That right there opened the door, I promise you, for her guys to start digging and finding out what is he there for. Probably not what he said. And why is he always trying to get her fired? Because she's catching their crime and he's trying to protect the owner from what they're trying to do. And she, they don't like that. So that once, once we caught the stage tips and they change it to VIP tips, or just tips, you know, let's pay the tips here. Then it's laundered money. It's not prostitution money. It's a tip during the, it's a tip. And it's, it's a strip club tip. And then lately, the last time was, I'll bring in a, we have people that are regular customers that always come in and they always get a bunch of ones and they always throw it on stage and they have a great time and leave. But I'm not talking about those people. These are different people. These are your people. And they'll come in and they'll cash in a whole bunch of, uh, you know, here's a bunch of hundreds, give me some ones. And then they leave with them. That's not money laundered. Did you think it was? Is that la Do you consider it laundered? I don't think we consider that laundered. It's still prostitution money. Right? Once in a while, you have some whack job that comes in, and he'll get a stack of ones. It says rent money. And you can tell by the way he looks and the way he's dressed, he doesn't have money. He doesn't have it. He's just trying to look important and get a bunch of girls to come sit with him. But he has no intention of spending that in that club. That's his rent. He just wants to look important. So no girl's getting any, a dime out of the guy. He's just going to sit there and look important and help a bunch of girls go talk to him, thinking he's got money. And uh, he's going to leave with that. He's going to leave with those ones. He's going to go to the bank. He's going to get a money order for the landlord, and he's going to pay the rent with that. We can tell those. We can tell the difference between those kind and your customers. They look. They dress different. They look different. They talk different. They act different. So I mean, we've been at this a while. So your your guys come in, and they want they they cash in the ones, and then they throw them on the stage, and it's always on the same girls, your girls. Or they at the, at the, it's at the very end of the night. At the very end of the night, they want the the girl hadn't done shit all night long. All of a sudden, here she comes. Wow, she's expecting somebody because she hadn't been out here all night. She's been sleeping in the back. But at the very end of the night, here she comes, and she goes right up to your guy. So she was expecting him to come in. They get a VIP, and then she's she's going to go meet him somewhere, and there's that. They've now laundered the money. It's now tip money for a VIP. Right? Right, probably. So. Your girls don't work all night. You don't want them to make money. Because whatever money they make selling dances is their money, right? So we can tell your girls they don't sell anything. They don't sell shit. All night long. Right at the end, they might sell one thing. Might be a dance, might be a VIP. And, but they get tipped like a motherfucker, right? Laundered money. Then they give that to you. And then they go s service the client. And then you let them have a little apartment or whatever and eat sometimes. Maybe. Drive a crap car. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so, but for all that, you know, we wouldn't have to document it. And we wouldn't have... Our lives wouldn't all be up, turned upside down when you confront them. Okay, so here is, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. I really, you know, all my family's gone. My kids, you've, you've made it where my kids don't talk to me anymore. I don't, I don't have a permanent, you know, house or anything that I need to, I mean, I don't have shit left. So, I mean, I don't have anything, you know, I don't have anything to give up at this point. Right now the goal is justice. You go to jail and we're done. And so, you've already taken everything I own. There's no leverage left. We're quoting you. You're not quoting us. I have your people's names. And this thing where your guy said, 
we spend a lot of money and a lot of time grooming her family to help facilitate the trafficking, to help deliver. And le- only she found out she's pissed off at him because they betrayed her trust and they were talking to us and they shoved her out of their lives and now they can't just walk up to her since they haven't talked to her for four or five years. Can't just walk up to her and go, maybe you should go with me. You should uh, get the fuck out of my face. So we can't do our little, you call it, it's a code word, little red riding hood. So we wasted all that time and money. Yeah, you did. Let's hope so. Okay, so how much money have you spent buying a Centel? Nobody else has. Larry, realtor from Houston, thinks he bought a person. Can't get a date the normal way. Houston compound. Kids are shitting the floor. Kids are getting sodomized. How much money did you spend getting us that intel? We're going to get her fired. We're going to take her car. We're going to make her destitute until she is forced into being trafficked. We have that. You guys t- say that over and over and over. How many recordings do they have of you saying that? The judge has already heard him, Charles. How many do we have? Who else has heard him, Charles? I'm not the only one, and they need to know there's 40 people in it. 12, There, in addition to the 40 in law enforcement, there's 12 reporters that we want, when, they, when the story breaks, we want it broken right. We want them to already have the information. So they've heard a lot of the recordings I've heard. Three of them are not in the U.S., Okay, three of them aren't in the U.S. Has it broke yet? Nope. They've agreed to sit on it until such time that they're ready to make arrest. And then the story will get out. Here's what really happened, and they won't be able. It won't. They, you know, there won't be. They won't be able to spin it like you. Yeah. Anyways, this is what this is from the National Stalking Resource Center. They've done training videos for cops, prosecutors, and judges. And this one, the use of technology talks about stalkers use of of cloning and high hacking a phone to monitor communication, to monitor whereabouts. This right here is uh, Mr. Perry is also a video voyeur. He's a peeping Tom. It's pathetic. This one right here is what police are supposed to do with the police report. It isn't give it to the violent offender. Domestic violence. Stalking is domestic violence. They were trained to murder me. I didn't get a blood test to prove it or disprove it, did I? No, Mr. Perry obstructed justice. And because you let him do that, you, you have facilitated it basically um, by giving him the police report you, that I filed to protect my life. You showed depravity, depraved indifference to human life. What the fuck is that? I grew up in police. The pro- my, my granddad, my dad, my great granddad were cops. I grew up in the, in the police home. And that is not policing. Indifference. Depraved indifference to human life. Let's take her police report and give it to the violent offender who just tried to kill her. And then you got a cop killed. Didn't you? This right here. Six days after a car vandalism report was filed with Manford Police Department. The report taken by Officer Michael Neely. Michael Neely is accused of murdering Chief Miller by beating him to death. And here, in this article by the Washington Post, Ty Buttram and Chief Ridley both said it didn't make any sense that they would have a drunk or brawl and Mike would kill Lucky. That doesn't make sense. Yep, there's a reason it didn't make sense. This goes through the whole thing. The medical examiner said Chief Miller's head was hit back and forth so hard that it, he died of internal decapitation. His head came off his body, and it was like he was in a car crash. And Mike Neely was accused of doing this. And why he was charged, much less found c- guilty, we don't know. Look at that. It's right there. The Emmys... Right there. Medical examiner said Miller was internally decapitated, which would require the same force one would face in a car crash. Right. And yet, the odd thing is here, t- pull her taillight out to have her pulled over. 
we we t- they called me. They just had your tail light taken out to have you pulled over. Lucky hates that. He's sick of getting those calls. Pull her over. This was what originally reported to Mike. They put this in my trunk, and the same powder was in a room three doors down where David Robertson has employees staying. How did you know they had to be begged to go? He'd asked me that about four times. I would not answer. That means you premeditated it and you begged him to go, right? Point out for me, that's what this says, point out for me the marks on this man that looked like he hit somebody so hard he was like in a car crash. See, his hands would have looked like Chief Miller's face. And they don't. He didn't hit anybody. He wasn't in a fight. Instead, he was found unconscious and drugged. He was in respiratory distress, dying of opioid overdose, treated with Narcan, not being knocked out in a fight. And the jury never heard anybody say that. I was going to say that. I was supposed to testify. My uh, deposition is right here. They even had it. And oddly, I did not get to testify, so I filed two motions to intervene with evidence attached. And this, uh, there's supposed to be a hearing on standing. There was nothing. So why would you do that if you didn't kill him? And for a mic. This right here is the uh, arrest report. There's only one injury, a red swollen right hand. One injury the cops list on here. For a man who's accused of beating someone to death. Causing internal decapitation. There's an IV needle in his right hand that made it red and swollen. And in this interview, the, uh, the interviewing detective does not say, you have injuries here, 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 here. So it appears you beat him to death. He says, it, Mike is like, I don't have any injuries consistent with me being in a fight. He's kind of pointing that out. And the detective says, it appears he was beat to death. By who? By who? When Mike, Mike took my police report six days ago from this picture, from the day this happened. So we told the Florida State's attorney in March 2020, he didn't do it, he was drugged. Depositions hadn't been taken yet. We were the only ones that had that information. It says right here in May, he was treated with Narcan. He was dying of drug overdose. Now, how did we know that before, after, same, different? What did you want me to lie about, Charles, that we emailed the Florida State's attorney telling them Mike was drugged, he didn't do it, or that it was confirmed months later in the depositions that weren't put on the docket for public review till like June or July? Mm -hmm. There's my thing. Yep, yep. You're not supposed to witness tamper, sir. You're not supposed to kill cops. See, based on what I know and what I've seen, I believe you to be cop killers. That is my opinion. I don't have to use the word allegedly. (coughs) <coughs> That's my opinion. We're going to take her car. There's lots of conversations. That whole murder thing was over her car. It's not legal, but I'm going to have her car towed and sold before she figures that out. And so somebody around that same time uh, said, listen, I have a girlfriend. Charles Perry is not her boyfriend. They've not even been in the same room. He is full of shit. And he's delusional, by the way. And I can't even stand talking to him. He goes, uh, I have a girlfriend, and I don't call her friends and family at all. There's some boundaries there you don't cross. I don't, I don't call her friends and family at all, but if I did, it would be to find out what she wants for her birthday or Christmas, not get information off her car so I can take it away from her, make her walk, make her destitute. That's some, there's something else going on here. Something else is up. At the time, they, they, they didn't, you know... The, the human trafficking, we didn't know. So the thing with my work is I've worked behind the bar last year this time, and there was another girl who was stealing, and they accused me. So I had to sit for nine hours and watch cameras and point that out here. Elimin- I wasn't even waitressing that night. I was dancing. But I had to go behind the bar because she's in the back smoking pot talking to her murder boyfriend in prison on a, uh, on a uh, contraband phone. So... She's busy. I, she's not behind the bar. I got. I sell a dance. I got to go pay for it and write it down. So I had to go behind the bar and do that. Then I go back and I give my whatever. She's accusing me of stealing the money. And I'm like, yeah. No, but now you have made it where I have to fi- spend eight hours, of my, nine hours of my time watching cameras to find out what you did. So first we watch me and eliminate me. Then we watch the DJ cash in his ones and eliminate him. Because we're only back there for a brief minute a couple of times. 
I think I was back there once. He was back there two or three times cashing in his ones. By the way, on the money machine, you can see clearly, plain as day. It'll count the money. It's got a little number. Here's how much money we just counted on the machine. You can see that with the cameras. So we could tell if he was cashing in the right amount of ones. He's, he's put 20 ones in. It rolls through, and then there's a number 20 on it. You can see it on the cameras. Then he'll put those in and get a $20 bill and leave. Okay, so we've cleared him. So the girl, uh, the meth head, she she uh, she stole about a hundred something dollars. We watched sit there and watch her do it on the camera. Then and then, uh, right before I was going to leave, they tried again. Calvin told him try again. When she sets the money up, he said, accuse her of stealing it when she sets the money up. Well, okay. So I quit setting the money up. Here's the bag. You set it up. So she comes in like I think it was like on the night I was leaving. There's two hundred dollars missing from the bar money. Uh, and we need to roll the cameras and I go well you don't actually need to because I took the money out of the safe and put it right up on the counter I didn't open the bag I didn't even open it you did oh 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 yeah okay she goes right back running back we got a call we got to call the owner we got to call oh my god the listen and and I'm like first of all why are you counting the drawer now because we usually don't do that till the end of the night and it's 10 o'clock but I am getting ready to leave. You're trying to trying to get it before I leave. You're accusing me of stealing. You're trying to get something done here before I leave. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're caught on that. She comes running back in. Oh, the DJ had it. The DJ stole it. Oh, okay. You were going to try to say I did. Calvin told you to say that right. Now, I've been back behind the bar for since like 1st of November or something. No problems at all. Everything comes up balanced up perfectly. All of a sudden, out of the blue, right when they need to traffic, three times I'm short, supposedly. Three times. This Friday, the Friday before that, and the Friday, always on a Friday, when Joe's guy's there. Not any other night. I don't work just one night a week. Not any, Only when Joe's guy's there. What are the chances? So that right there is fishy. Because remember, we, we suspect they want to take over the club without the owner knowing they're taking over the club. That Joe's guy's there to try to find leaks. Which girls are leaking? To who are they leaking? How does she find out about this? How does she know? Right? Isn't that what he's in there for? Okay. So, get rid of all the girls except their girls. So, through those girls, they're running the club, basically. Um, so, when he's there, I'm short. Three times. Just out of the blue all of a sudden. Haven't been short all this time. I'm paying for supplies for that club out of my own pocket. I can turn the receipt in and get reimbursed. I don't. He does. Every time he buys a littlest thing for the club, he wants to be reimbursed. I don't. Half the time, I throw the receipt away and I don't think about it again. I've worked for that place. One night, I got pissed off at him because he was pushing me. He was trying to... There was this one chick, gosh, you're not writing my dances down. I'm like, oh my God. Just prove it on camera. Shut up. Prove it on camera. Shut up. Uh, I think he said something about it. I looked at him and I go, listen, I've worked here for 10 years. The owner knows my strength and weaknesses perfectly. You're the new guy. She's the new girl. Don't forget that. And he, he finally backed off, got off my back. I couldn't believe it. So uh, w what happens is I take money out of the tip jars because everyone has told me people steal the money out of the tip jars. The other waitress, the owner, and even a bartender that's a customer there. You have to get your money out of the tip jars unless you can get a unless you can get a tip jar that locks or something because people will come up and steal it. So the second people put it in, I take it and shove it in my pocket. Sometimes I'm out waiting waiting on customers out on the floor. They're handing me tips, I shove it in my pocket. A couple times a night, I used to take the ones out, cash them in for some for a 20 or t or for a 40. I stopped doing that. And, I, and uh, as, as frequent as I was. And uh, so three weeks ago, I take the money out and I put the ones in and it's $54. So I take 54, I cash the ones in for 50, to, you know, two 20s and a 10. I don't need the four, I just put back in my pocket. You can see that on camera. All of that is on camera. They got cameras all over that place. So then at the next day, they, they, they text me, go, you're $54 short. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Then the next weekend, 
Again, everything's fine in between. It's only on Friday when when this guy's there. Uh, the Joe's guy. Then uh, I the same thing. I pull all you know, pulling the money out of the out of the the tip jar. It's my money. I've earned it. Or customers are tipping me on the floor. It's my money. I've earned it. It goes in my pocket, and, it co- and then I'm t- cashing in my ones. It's seventy-seven dollars. The next day they call me. You're seventy-seven dollars short. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not. Prove it on camera. Guess what? It is not my responsibility to watch the cameras. That's your responsibility to watch the cameras. If I had something to hide, I wouldn't want you to watch the cameras, would I? And I might even want to be there when you're watching the cameras in case I need to explain something away. I don't need to be there. You prove it. You're making the call. You're making an a- uh, an accusation. You prove that I stole that money. I didn't steal the money. It's exactly the amount of my tips. Right when they want to traffic me, and right when we know Calvin has told y'all to do that. Now I'm not sure if the owner knows why how this happened or why this happened. Because there's plenty of people walking back that can write shit down on a paper to make it look like that. What I'm saying is, it's the same amount twice. Now, this Friday night, since we knew they were doing that, and it's the amounts are matching up, and our guys are like, well, that's a pattern. Remember, we spot patterns the second time you do it. Doesn't take us 10 years. Um, when you do the crime to me, you get caught. That's the pattern, dumb dumb. You must be governor. Can't figure that pattern out yet. So... I'm not going to cash in my ones. I'm, I'm like, nope, I'll take it to the bank tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not cashing them in here at all. Because I'm sick of them accusing me of stealing. I'm not stealing. I'm not even making mistakes. Uh, I, so I have a bunch of I'll, They've accumulated now all, all night long. And uh, s- some, are, some people tip me in bigger bills, but the ones had accumulated all night long. And... Uh, the, own, the, the owner's like, I mean, I'm like, we're out of ones. We don't have any more ones. <coughs> we had your people coming in. We need $500 in ones so we can say we laundered it. We're like, oh, my. The, the owner was even like, nope, we just gave you a 300 Go spend the 3 and then come back. When the 3 has been on thrown on stage and I have those girls coming back up here with that 300 need them cashed in, then I'll give you more money, okay? So listen to how this works. You're going to be a customer. You're going to walk in. You're going to say, here's a $100 bill. Give me 100 and ones. You're going to then throw that $100 on the stage on the girls who are then going to bring it back to the bar and cash it in for bigger bills. So when that doesn't happen and we're not seeing those ones recirculate, what is happening to them? What are you doing with them? See, we look, we watch stuff like that. Anything that's not normal, anything that's off, why is it off? Why is it off? Nobody takes a stack of ones to go pay the rent. Nobody does that. So the girls, when they got a stack of ones, bring it back to the bar and it's recirculating. And now we cash them out for a bigger bill and now we have more ones. We do it every night, six nights a week. So when these when the, when your people come in and do that weird shit they do, we know something's off. Okay, so we need ones. I take the ones out of my pocket, show it to the owner's son, and said, "You count this, and then I'll cash them out." I'm not going to count my. You do it. He did. Tells me it's 180. I said, "Okay, I'm taking 180." I have a 20 in my purse in my wallet. I take my wallet out of my pocket take a 20 out so now I've got 220s I put them in the drawer and take out 102 $100 bills the next day we're $200 short nope we're not I'm sorry you're this is a third Friday it's exactly the amount of my tips three times 54 77 200 so you're caught now you watch the camera You prove I stole it or shut up. Just like that. That's all there is to it. They've done that. They want to get me fired. Had no problems all this time. All of a sudden now, right before they got a delivery deadline. (coughs) Right when we're hearing them talk a lot about taking my car away from me. Right when I hear, we hear a lot about, we just got to sit her down and explain. She can't stay here. This is how this works. Right when I get pulled over. 
and I'm telling the officer, um, you know, it's <coughs> it looks like you were waiting for me. He didn't say, and you are who? Why would it be waiting for you? He said, no, I just got here. And I'm thinking an hour after this place closed down and everybody's long gone and there's no one to patrol but me. I'm the only one left. The club is empty. The business next door is empty and closed. Everything's closed. There is no one else to patrol but me. So you were waiting here for me. And then after that, our guys get a whole bunch of phone calls of, what do you mean our driver's license was clean? Oh, I thought this was supposed to be over tonight. <coughs> so, the evidence is such that it supports our contention and our assertion that Charles Perry, David Robertson, <coughs> Lucius Calvin are trying to force delivery in an illegal traffic human trafficking deal. Yes or no? Answer the question. <coughs> true or not true, Charles? Answer the question for the court, Judy, or Judge Egan, or whoever, Judge Parker, whoever you're in front of with your bullshit story under oath, <coughs> your perjured statements. Is that true? Yes or no? <coughs> okay, so we always get this information in before, not after. Right, Charles? Mike Neely was drugged. But because TPD gave my police report right to the offender who obstructed justice and they didn't prosecute that, he was able to reoffend and kill a cop and frame another one and ruin a bunch of lives. Our guys, normal people that help us, pissed, pissed as fuck at everybody who had anything to do with that. So anyone can review all that. And, uh, no, Mr. Perry, nobody asked you what you think. You can't be governor if you can't understand. No one cares what you think. You are not asked. Okay? No one cares. All right, so this is, uh, this is the, this is the order that was denied because I didn't bring the, pol the police report in. You have to. It's the law. Marlin versus Thrower. Um, I'm getting death threats. I'm getting threatened with death and false arrest. So, there it is. Did you give me arsenic? Yes. I was getting sick. I bought charcoal to, to take at work to absorb what was getting me sick. Okay? He, he admitted it. Then, uh, I filed a police report like you're supposed to. Here it is. The date on that is the 21st. Okay? The date on the arrest report out of Lubbock um, is... I'm looking for it. Oh, fuck your dismissal. It is. 29th. That was the 29th. Six, well, about at the same time. Mike Neely takes my police report. Six days later, Chief Miller's murdered, and he's uh, accused of killing him while he's asleep, dying of drug overdose. And uh, same amount of time, about 21st to the 29th, I'm charged in Lubbock. No evidence has been collected. I've not heard from TPD at all. I filed it with the desk clerk. Here's the call. 15th. We need, if you want to press charges, we need to get your evidence. I need to see the text. There was also a video camera at Lady Godiva's where it happened. The same guy that I'm working with now worked there then. Guess what? Some of the girls where I work with now, they get sick, oddly. Right? Some guy walks in, he's uh, saying he's a customer, I'm going to give you blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's Nick. These girls are getting sick. I'm like, to, told one of the guys, take take them to the hospital. I get a full tox. Don't get just a little tox panel. Tell them you want a full tox panel. Not a partial, a full. Get everything. The same guy? No, they just need to sit here and let it wear off. I'm sure, they, I'm sure that's what you'd like. Why are they sick and what do you care? Because I'm going to exercise due care. I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to practice medicine without a license. And I'm not going to diagnose treatment. Sit here and let it wear off. It's treatment. I'm not going to order treatment without examining or being licensed and you are doing that right now you don't have that right I said take him to the professional who knows what's, what to do 
and that's not you, is it? Yeah, that was a problem. So this was the first false arrest where I'm acting in compliance with the law in the state where I live. If someone's threatening you with death and false arrest, you need a protective order. This right here was in October. This is the McNamara email. He's threatening me with false arrest. He's threatening me again. There's not a day that goes by I don't get threatened with false arrest, income loss, property loss. I'm going to get you fired all day today. That's all I heard. Uh-huh. Pull, pull over. Look, there, there's a... Uh, Okay, and this is my communications back in 2011, well before I could anticipate Mr. Perry was going to go into court and claim he was the victim of a political vendetta that led to a false police report. That was never investigated, by the way. No evidence is collected. I'm already in jail when they call me back. Um, 2011, it's all about stalking. There's nothing political here. He's stalking. I may have to move. Pulling out behind my house, watching me in my backyard. I may have to move to people who didn't even live in Texas. My two friends here, I grew up with them. One lived in New, uh, one lived in Arizona. I grew up with them in New Mexico. One lived in Arizona. The other lived in Florida. Didn't They weren't Texas voters. Yep, that's not fishy. That's not fishy at all. This is dated, look at that. Being dead or arrested on some faked up charges like he's been trying to do for two years is also not going to equal him st not stalking or vindication, and that is dated January 4, 2016. Yeah. Okay. Why are you always in Oklahoma? Why are you trying to get me fired? What distance is of yours where I work? Tell the judge you're not stalking and you're not human trafficking, and there is no Houston compound where kids are, there's a bunch of hostages getting raped and pimped out. Tell. Go ahead, do it. Okay, because we got a different court that sees things, a, has a little bit more information, and they, they, they know that's not true. So he, I tell you, I'll tell you this one gets, uh, that guy gets very ir irritated at factual ignorance. Very irritated. So, so we've got all, I mean, we've got that. The tra he's going to take your car. We've got a bunch of human trafficking intel right here that I typed up in an email. Pull over. Look at that. That's how many times he's called in a pull over. That's a lot. See, this is not even. Look, that's not even one. That's a bunch. A bunch of pull overs. We got. Uh, we got the food. To, okay, yeah. So they call on my phone. They, um, we've said for years. He's using my DoorDash app to get me in a certain location where I might be pulled over and uh, having his people take pictures of me with their doorbell cameras so he can take it into court and say, while well, she was just working at her legal job delivering food, we got pictures of her so that we can show we're not stalking her and hacking her phone. Okay, so I picked one up about two, three weeks ago and um, my phone all of a sudden went from 20% charge to nothing and shut off in about two seconds. I mean, I just sat there and I just watched it drop. And I was like, they're shutting my phone off. He's going to have, my guy's like, he's going to have you pulled over. And he doesn't want you to show your insurance. Fuck. I got to get my other phone. I can't even deliver. I don't know where to take it unless I have the phone. I just picked the food up. So I have to run home, grab my other phone, text the customer. I'm sorry, I'm, you know, we're, I'm behind. This is what happened. And go a, a different route than what the DoorDash pl thing showed. So I didn't get pulled over, but... Um, so that was the first attempt, and it didn't work, so they just did it Friday night. The same night, $200 supposedly exactly the amount of my tips of the ones I cashed in. See, that's not the total amount of my tips, because not everybody tips in a w with ones. Some people tip with something else. So, uh, so, uh, I, the, you know, I've cashed in 54. Well, we're short 54. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't believe you. I cashed in 77. Oh, we're short 77. Yeah, now I really don't believe you. I cashed in 200. Oh, we're short 200. Yeah, now I absolutely don't believe you. But here's the thing. You're going to make me go look at the cameras. Supposedly, I'm the thief. And I got to go watch the cameras. Really? You can't, oh, you're shitting me with that, right? Here, drug addict, guard the pharmacy. I mean, they want me. I'm accused of, of stealing. They want me to watch the cameras. <coughs> so I'm going to sit there for eight hours and then go, oh, I didn't steal the money? I mean, what do you, 
you know, um, he, he, you know, uh, do I, d you know, is the camera going to show them writing something on a paper or whatever it is they, you know, what, 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 you watch the cameras. You have the burden of proof on you. You prove I'm the one that ha took your money because I think you know you know me well enough to know I didn't take your money. Uh, you know they're playing some. Game. Calvin told, "Oh, we gotta we gotta get her fired." So we we want you to do the same phone calls he was making last year this time to uh, that other girl, right? Calvin. Calvin is a he's a tough guy. Likes to pick on girls. Oh, uh, we like. Oh my God. Okay, so somebody actually I guess pointed that out. Um, this, and this, and, and I guess he was like, he was like, we, we want to know, what I want to know is, did she, how did she know to remember those numbers specifically? Those are right on the money, exact on numbers. How did she know to remember those numbers? Did they tell her, here's what they're going to do, so pay attention to the amount of money you're cashing in at once, and remember the numbers? Or, I mean, how, how, how did that happen? We want to know what did she did. She put some. Uh, sometimes she'll put an email out like the Matt and Mary email before. Not always. Sometimes they just they'll just use this. They're just going to use this to get their ass and put him in jail. I mean that's all there is to it. This should be a crime deterrent. Go 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 get your little dolly and see if it'll save you. Get your dolly. You see if it'll save you. You're gonna get. You get to take. Well, you play with your dolly, right? Char we hear, we've heard Charles Perry does some weird ass shit in the day, during uh, just weird ass shit. You have no idea how weird. I mean, I make the hair on the back of your neck stand on end. The stuff we hear he does. <coughs> uh, he wants to be governor. Uh, you know, nothing would make me happier if he's doing anything but bothering me. If he gets off my back, if he's in Texas running for office, then he's not bothering me. So I don't. I really don't give a fuck. Uh, he's not smart enough to be governor. If he can't do cause and effect, when you do the crime to her, you get caught. Gosh, let's do the same thing every day that gets us results we say we don't like. I want to be governor. If you're going to be governor, you're going to have big problems coming at you all the time. You have to identify the problem. You have to identify the cause and as find a solution very quickly. No one has time to repeat for you. No one. There's no time for that. Go pray, go get your dolly. Yeah, he's weird as shit. Okay, so I guess that's what this guy was trying to figure out. It's, did she know before and they told her to pay attention to those numbers? That because she heard Calvin telling him what to do, or what? And and her driver's license came up, came up clean, and everybody was mad. Why? What was supposed to be on there? What was supposed to be on there? And who 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 took it off? What they put on there and what she, what, what was taken off? Tell the court, Charles. You like going to court and lying? Tell the court. What'd you put on my license? What'd you put on it? Huh? Well, we did say. We told you so. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, th there's no problem. We don't have, listen, we don't care. Um, I'm going to tell you right now. The owner and his family have, no matter what, have protection from our guys. Because we know that you guys are very dangerous, Calvin. You're dangerous. And that if they went against you, you would do something to them. And so, whatever they participate, they're fine. We don't have any problem with them at all. They have no problem with us at all. Okay? You need to understand that. We're on their side. We're not on your side. And I know that you think they're on your side. They're on your side because you're dangerous. Because if, you if they don't do what you say, you'll hurt them like you try to do me. Okay? So... We, there's certain people that they, they're not in trouble at all. My two kids are th and them. Okay. So we're going to not, we're, we're, there's not going to be any problem between them and our guys. Our guys have their back like a motherfucker. There's been all this stuff going on in that place that I never discussed with them for their protection because the guys that are helping me, they got it. They're handling it. They don't need you and they don't need them. They need to run their club and that's all they need to do. The rest of it, we got it. They're not in trouble at all, not with us. Because you'll hurt them if, you, if they don't do what you want, Calvin, right? Once you hurt everybody, you like hurting people that don't do what you say. You and Lucius and Joe and you, David and Charles, every, you, got, you go hurt people if they don't do what you want. Is that how that works, Benton Gore? You're, t you're another one, Benton Gore. I've not met Benton Gore. It ought to make, if you were smart, Mr. Benton Gore, 
you would shit yourself that I have your name. You're not smart. You don't know who's helping me. You don't know who has your name. What else do they have? When you go to jail, tell your jury how this human trafficking thing works and how Tim's transponder goes out every time he kidnaps a woman. Explain that to the FAA and your jury, okay? Tim, I mean, we're not playing games here. We've got more shit against you than anybody has ever gotten. Do we not? Yeah, we're not worried. Maybe it's this one. I'm trying to find it. It's, uh, it's like this morning. There's been a lot of stuff going on over the past. I mean, it has been a busy couple days. Because <coughs> it always is when you guys are up on a deadline. We got to get her to take it and make her sign that law. We got to make her wait. Sit her down and tell her just how this works. And we're like, oh my. How about telling your jury? Because we don't care. Tell your jury. They're going to care. Maybe it's this one. How'd she know all that? How'd she know all that? Right? Trying to get her fired. Trying to take her car. Two, on Friday night, they were trying to get me fired and trying to take my car. Right? I'm not going to buy the club $50 worth of supplies and throw the receipts in the trash and not think about it again and then steal money. If I wanted that money, if I wanted money, I'd have turned the receipts in, don't you think? Yeah. That's my tip money. We, the guys go, they don't want you to pay your bills and have a place to live and eat. Remember, they want you destitute so that you'll, go, you'll feel forced to cooperate with them. So they're seeing how much your ones are, and they're just trying to take your money away from you. They're stealing. It's the same thing they've been doing all this time, stealing your money, always causing a problem. But when you do it to me, I have help, so you get caught, right? Oh, and then we have the murder thing. Yeah. we got a framer for a murder. We've been talking about that for years, and we've sat down and detailed the conversations that you have where you're trying to figure out how to frame me for the murder. Put me at the location, even one time, and how do I know the victim? I've never met the victim. So how am I going to kill someone that I've never met at a place I've never been? I've not been to the location, okay? I've not been there. Um, somebody told you that. Maybe Richard. I can't put her there ever because y'all ran all our friends off, so she doesn't have anybody to hang out with. She went, She just goes, all she does is go home and go to work and the grocery. Right now, I can't even go to the gym because you'll do something to me at the gym. Uh, that was another point that somebody went on a crazy rant. I think we're all going to be glad when Mr. Perry's gone and not up here demanding people in Oklahoma get him elected to the governor's office in Texas. It's not our problem. That's his problem. If he wants to be governor, go run for governor and leave us alone. If I have to pick, if I see, I cringe every time I, he calls him, I have to talk to him. I'm sick of hearing his voice, his whiny, naggy voice. Sick of hearing it. I'm sick and tired of it. I think we all want to see Cindy be happy and be able to go to work and everything's fine and normal and make money and pay her bills on time and go to finish school and date whoever she wants to date and hang out with the people she wants to hang out with. Now, my family and I got along fine until all of a sudden they just cut me off. No reason. No reason at all. Somebody got very upset with them. If this was my relative, we have a female relative that's single. If some guy came around my house and started trying to talk to me, I would tell him, she said you're stalking her. You get off my property and don't come back unless she brings you. Understood? Because you're, you're trespassing. Get off my property. And don't call me and don't bother my family. So why didn't her family do that to her, for her? Why'd they let him come over? They, they're having him over for dinner. They're hanging out with him. They're buddy-buddy with him. While she's living in her car, barely eating. And that is the most disgusting yuck I've ever heard of in my life. I, I don't even, I can't, I don't, I don't understand that. Why would anyone do that? Why the fuck would anyone do that? To their own family. That's what I would have said. She's our family. You're a stranger. Get off my property and don't come back unless she brings you. 
don't come don't come around us sir so why did her family not do that so if you have people mr perry that are normal and can understand your deviant sick fucked up con conduct that is criminal conduct and we're getting help and you're not you're getting told on because people want you to go the fuck away then if you can't tell that's that 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 you know that you, that that everybody's had it with you, then you can't be governor, sir. You're not smart enough. You're not intellectually competent. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. What matters is you cannot identify the problems, the cause of the problems, and find a solution very quickly. And that without, you know, we've said the same thing to you guys over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and it is just not clicking and you do the same thing over and over and over gets the same results you're caught you've never been caught this much in your lives you all run around going how'd she find out how'd she know that we never asked that question in 10 years we've never asked that question so what day is he ready to make an arrest or well there'll be a bunch of them what day will that be how many charges did you want to add on that list charles all you had to do is get the fuck off me and leave me alone what he said is, in 2020, don't invade her privacy. Don't contact her or her family in any way, shape, or form. Not directly, not indirectly. And get your hands out of her wallet. And don't do things like cause problems for her at work. Or make it where she can't go to work. Because you every, you made everything hostile. You stay out of her work. You mind your own business. You go be with your family. You go cause trouble with your family. And you leave her family alone. You just like causing problems for everybody. Go do that to your own family and you leave hers alone. You invade her privacy, I will invade yours. You cause a problem for her, I will cause 20 for you. I'm a cop and I will do that for a criminal. I'll cause you a lot of problems. That's my thing, I like that. I like that. But you leave my girl alone. She's our witness, get the fuck off her. And you thought you had a choice, and we've quoted you every day since. And you guys that I'm naming you and I've not met you, what does that mean that I have your name but I've not met you? What does that mean? If you're not smart enough to know what that means, you know, uh, it sure shit can't be governor. When you do the crime to me, you get caught. That's the cause of your problem right there. And 10 years into this, you still don't know. Yeah, what, I mean, I don't know. You're social, socially inept. Your conduct is offensive. That's why it's a crime. It's not a crime, so it's offensive. It's offensive. I'm sorry. It's not offensive because it's a crime. It's a crime because it's offensive. <coughs> we live in a civilized society. If you're going to violate everybody else's rights, you go to jail. When you contact me, Charles, you get us more every time. I don't want to hear it. Every time you contact me at all in any way, shape, or form, do you get answers to your questions? No. Do you get caught? Yes. Do you get us intel? Absolutely. And yet you keep doing it. And you want to be governor. Yeah, I don't know. Things just don't click for you. And guess what? In the job of being governor and running a state, no one has time to re-explain the same thing to you over and over and over. And nobody has time to repeat themselves. You better get it and you better get it the first time. Most of the time they expect you not to have it, exp have, to have it explained to you, sir. And so, I mean, we've, we've just got a fuck ton. It was a very busy day. Look at that. I think people would just like to see Charles go back to Lubbock and leave her alone. And I think they would like to see her finally be happy. Finally get to go to work and there's not a bunch of drama and conflict and problems and hostility that he came up here and caused at work. She can't even, he goes, she can't go to the gym. She can't go to work. She can't go anywhere without he's got a problem ready for her to go right there. Goes, Here we go. Oh, brother. Not again. She can't go down the street. He'll have her pulled over. Have some fucking cop uh, harass her. I come from a whole family of cops. I know what police are supposed to do, and that's not it. That is not it. Okay? You don't call in a pullover, Calvin. You're the one that calls that in, aren't you? How do I know that? See, you're not smart enough to understand what it means that I know that. And I've not met you. 
So we're kind of scratching our head going, they're just, none of them, they're seen, all of them are senile. Because not, they've never seen this before, and not one of them uh, understands what it means that we have the information we have. They don't understand. It's just not, it's like, it's just not clicking for them. What does it mean that we have that? What does it mean that people get us that information? What does it mean when we say, we're getting the help, you're getting told on? Don't get it mixed up. You can't name our people. You're not quoting our meetings. You're not, you don't know our code words. But we have all of that on you. What does that mean? You're just all that mentally slow, and you're, you're not, you have no idea, do you? Uh, okay, that's your problem. That's your fucking problem. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. There's nothing you can, you can't fix stupid, and you can't reason with crazy, and you're living, breathing proof of that. You're going to be walking. We're going to take in your car. Last night, that was it. Today, it's, uh, I'm going to get you fired. Uh-huh. Your threats are duly noted for the record every time you make them. You know, we're talking about specific information here, specific threats to cause a specific harm, and a lot of times details on how he's going to do it, when, where. This is what he said, and you thought you had a choice. And you, well, because you thought you had a choice and you were wrong about that, he wants to be governor. Keep in mind, we got Lucius, Calvin, Geppetto, Blankenship, Desiree, Beverly, Sanjay, you know, a bunch of names of your people that work for you. Greg, Tim, Larry, found out I was trafficked, found out about the Houston compound where kids are getting raped. Right? Okay, well, you didn't have a choice. You don't now. That's all there is to it. And then uh, lastly, I guess someone was speculating about uh, I need you to find out if she and Fabian are actually together. Are they communicating through her people? Did they get married through her people? Did Can we break them up? Is there some way we can break those two up if they're together? Wow. is it None of that's any of your business, is it? None of that concerns you at all. You've been accused of trafficking human beings, and that is a very serious crime. you got a whole lot bigger problems to worry about than that, don't you think? You're just not all there, are you? You got you guys are all senile. You can see it. I mean, everybody's like, I I don't know. It's I it's just just not elevator. It's not going to the top. Charles doesn't work at all. He wants to be governor. I just I'm I'm sorry, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. He's never campaigning. He's always over here bothering Cindy. I I'm I'm just not seeing it happen for him. I think yeah, I think he's a, as whack job as they come. I think he's as weird as they get. And uh, deranged, depraved. I don't know. I'm just not seeing it happen. I, 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 they're all. I think they're all headed down a rabbit hole because I think they're all not all there. Things just don't click for them. Police, Cynthia, I'm looking at the uh, report that you made on harassment and stalking. And I uh, need to speak with you concerning the report. I uh, need to get some more details and probably need to look at your phone for the, uh, the text messages if you're wanting to pursue this. You can reach me at 918-596-2824 and just give me a call and we'll set up a date and time for me to talk with you. Again, my number is 918-596-2824. Messages for Cynthia Ortiz, this is Detective Egan with Tulsa Police. Uh, Cynthia, I'm looking at the uh, report that you made on harassment and stalking, and I uh, need to speak with you concerning the report. I uh, need to get some more details and probably need to look at your phone for the, uh, the text messages if you're wanting to pursue this. You can reach me at 918-596-2824. And just give me a call, and we'll set up a date and time for me to talk with you. Again, my number is 918-596-2824.